The little boutique nestled on the corner of Springwood Avenue exuded a quiet charm that belied its bustling surroundings. A vintage signboard with elegant script proclaimed it as Aurora's Treasures, adorned with tasteful posters showcasing the latest in adult fashion. Located in the heart of a quaint neighborhood known for its cobblestone streets and leafy trees, the shop was a sanctuary of style and sophistication amidst the urban hustle. It was a typical weekday afternoon when he walked in. The bell above the door chimed softly, signaling the entrance of a man whose presence immediately set me on edge. Tall and ruggedly handsome, he carried an air of quiet intensity that seemed to clash with the serene atmosphere of the boutique. His piercing gaze swept over the displays, but his body language hinted at an inner turmoil, his jaw set tight and his shoulders tense. Approaching the counter with purposeful strides, he thrust a crumpled wad of bills towards me without a word. Each fold in the bills seemed to reflect the tension in his demeanor, as if each crease held a story of its own. His eyes, though averted from mine, conveyed a sense of urgency and a hint of underlying aggression. I hesitated for a moment, my hands instinctively reaching out to accept the money, though my mind raced with uncertainty. His silence was unsettling, and the weight of his presence made me acutely aware of my vulnerability. The muted sounds of the street outside seemed to fade into the background, leaving only the palpable tension between us. Struggling to maintain my composure, I attempted to soothe the situation with a calm professionalism. Is there anything else I can assist you with today, sir? My voice, despite my efforts, quivered slightly. His response was a terse shake of the head, accompanied by a barely perceptible nod towards the cash register. As I processed the transaction, my thoughts raced. Who was this man, and what had brought him to my quiet haven? The atmosphere crackled with unspoken words and unexplained actions, leaving me grappling with a mixture of fear and curiosity. Yet, amidst the unease, a determination to uphold my professional demeanor persisted, a thin veil of control over my racing heart. Finally, with the transaction completed, he turned abruptly and strode towards the exit, his steps echoing faintly against the wooden floor. The bell above the door jingled once more, marking his departure. I exhaled a shaky breath, feeling the tension slowly ebb away with each passing second. As I watched him disappear down the sunlit street, I couldn't shake the lingering unease that his presence had left behind. The afternoon light filtered through the lace curtains, casting gentle patterns on the polished hardwood floor. Yet, despite the peaceful ambience, the memory of his intense gaze and his unsettling demeanor lingered leaving me with a sense of disquiet that refused to be easily dismissed. The following day dawned with the promise of another busy afternoon at Aurora's Treasures. The boutique hummed with activity as customers browsed through racks of elegant attire, their murmured conversations blending with the soft melodies drifting from hidden speakers. I stood behind the counter, arranging a display of delicate accessories, striving to maintain a semblance of normalcy despite the lingering unease from yesterday's encounter. As the clock approached the peak shopping hours, a tense hush fell over the boutique. The familiar chime of the door announced his return, a stark contrast to the gentle melody that accompanied most patrons. His presence seemed to warp the air around him, his steps heavier and more purposeful than before. This time there was no hesitation in his approach. He strode towards the counter with a determined stride, his features etched in a mask of simmering anger. The lines on his forehead deepened into furrows, and his hands clenched into tight fists at his sides. His eyes, once intense, now blazed with an unsettling fire. Where is she? His voice sliced through the ambient noise, sharp and demanding. The question hung in the air, loaded with unspoken implications that sent a shiver down my spine. Panic clawed at the edges of my composure as I struggled to find my voice. I, I'm sorry, sir, I stammered, my eyes darting towards my colleagues who were discreetly observing the unfolding scene. Their expressions mirrored my own unease, a silent acknowledgement of the escalating tension. His agitation escalated with every passing second, his words growing harsher as he demanded a refund for what he claimed was a faulty purchase. Despite my attempts to reason with him, his anger only intensified, his frustration palpable enough to unsettle even the most composed bystanders. I could feel the collective unease of the other customers who had begun to sense the volatile atmosphere. Whispers of concern circulated among them, 
and I caught fleeting glimpses of worried glances exchanged between strangers. Some edged towards the exit, eager to distance themselves from the escalating confrontation. The delicate balance of the boutique, usually a haven of tranquility, teetered on the brink of chaos. Summoning all the professionalism I could muster, I signaled discreetly to my colleagues for assistance. With practiced ease, born of mutual understanding, they approached, their presence a subtle reassurance amidst the mounting tension. Together, we attempted to diffuse the situation, offering solutions and compromises in measured tones. Yet his anger remained unyielding, his demands becoming increasingly unreasonable. The once serene ambience of Aurora's treasures now echoed with the strained negotiation, punctuated by the occasional sharp retort. Each passing moment felt like an eternity, the weight of his dissatisfaction hanging heavy in the air. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity of fraught exchanges, he relented. With a final glare that spoke volumes of his simmering resentment, he turned on his heel and stormed out, the door slamming shut behind him with a jarring finality. The relief that washed over me was palpable, though tempered by the lingering fear of his unpredictable return. As the boutique gradually resumed its usual rhythm, the tension slowly dissipated. My colleagues exchanged weary smiles, a silent acknowledgement of our shared ordeal. The other customers cautiously returned to their browsing, though the memory of his explosive visit lingered like a shadow over the remainder of the day. In the aftermath of his departure, I couldn't shake the sense of dread that clung to me. His presence had left an indelible mark on the tranquil sanctuary of Aurora's treasures, a reminder that beneath the veneer of elegance and sophistication, unpredictability lurked in the shadows, waiting to disrupt the fragile peace. The sun had dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows through the windows of Aurora's treasures. The bustling energy of the day had faded, leaving a calm silence that was both comforting and unnerving. As the last customer exited and the door locked with a definitive click, my colleagues and I gathered in the back room, a cozy, intimate space cluttered with merchandise and paperwork. The tension from the day's events hung heavily in the air, an unspoken acknowledgement of the unsettling encounter. We settled into the worn chairs around the small table, the familiar hum of the store replaced by the low murmur of our voices. It was time to discuss what had transpired. I've never seen anyone so angry, I began, my voice barely above a whisper. The memory of his searing gaze and aggressive stance replayed in my mind. He just wouldn't listen. My colleague Sarah nodded in agreement. Her usually cheerful demeanor was replaced by a somber expression. He's been here before, she revealed, her tone grave. A few times, actually. Each time, he gets more aggressive. A ripple of shock ran through me. What do you mean? This has happened before? Sarah exchanged a knowing glance with Mark, another colleague who had been with the boutique longer than I had. Mark sighed, leaning forward with a serious look in his eyes. Yeah, he's been a problem for a while. Always demanding refunds or exchanges, always with that same anger. Last time he even threatened Emily. My stomach churned at the mention of our co-worker who had left the boutique earlier that year. Threatened her? How? Mark's expression darkened. He grabbed her arm and told her he'd come back if he didn't get his money. She was terrified. The room fell into a heavy silence as the gravity of the situation sank in. The serene atmosphere of Aurora's treasures had been marred by the spectre of this volatile man, and the realization of his recurring presence filled me with a profound sense of fear. We can't let this continue, I said, my voice trembling but resolute. It's not safe for any of us. Sarah nodded, her expression determined. We need to take action. Maybe we can install security cameras or have a panic button installed at the counter. Mark agreed, his eyes scanning the room as if seeing it with new awareness. And we should all have each other's backs. If he comes in again, no one should be alone with him. We spent the next hour devising a plan. Sarah made a list of potential security measures from installing cameras to contacting local authorities about the incidents. Mark suggested we have a meeting with the boutique's owner to discuss the seriousness of the situation and ensure we had their support. As we talked, the fear gradually gave way to a sense of solidarity. We shared stories of other difficult customers, lighter moments amidst the tension, and strategies for handling similar situations in the future. 
The camaraderie and mutual support helped to alleviate some of the dread that had settled in my chest. By the time we wrapped up our discussion, a plan was in place. We would address the safety concerns head on, ensuring that Aurora's treasures remained a sanctuary not just for our customers, but for us as well. The boutique's charm and elegance would not be overshadowed by fear. As we locked up and stepped out into the cool night air, I felt a renewed sense of purpose. The path ahead was uncertain, but with the support of my colleagues, I knew we could face whatever challenges lay ahead. Aurora's treasures was more than a boutique. It was a testament to our resilience and determination, and together we would protect it. The city was my sanctuary, a tapestry of familiar places that brought me comfort and routine. On weekends, I loved to stroll through Rosewood Park with its blooming flowers and serene walking paths. The park was a haven of tranquility where I could lose myself in the soothing rustle of leaves and the distant laughter of children. My other regular stops included the corner cafe with its rich aroma of freshly brewed coffee and the bustling grocery store where I stocked up on essentials. It was during one such leisurely walk through Rosewood Park that I first noticed him. He was standing near the ice cream kiosk, his gaze fixed on me with an unsettling intensity. I felt a chill run down my spine as our eyes met, and for a moment the vibrant colours of the park seemed to fade into the background. I quickened my pace, hoping to lose him in the crowd, but when I glanced back, he was gone. Shaking off the encounter as a figment of my imagination, I continued with my day, heading to the nearby flower shop. I needed some fertilizer for my indoor plants, and the shop was a small, fragrant paradise of blooms and greenery. As I browsed the shelves, I caught sight of him again, lingering by the entrance. His presence felt like a dark cloud over the cheerful ambience of the shop. My heart raced as I pretended to examine a pot of orchids, watching him from the corner of my eye. He didn't move, just stood there, watching me with that same unnerving stare. Panic bubbled up inside me, but I forced myself to stay calm. I quickly paid for my purchase and left, my mind swirling with fear and confusion. Over the next few days I saw him more often. At the grocery store he was there, casually browsing the aisles but always managing to be where I was. At the corner cafe, I noticed him sitting at a table near the window, his eyes never straying far from me. The sense of being watched became a constant, gnawing at my nerves and making me hyper aware of my surroundings. Every time I saw him, my anxiety spiked. I started to feel like a prisoner in my own city, my usual haunts tainted by his presence. The fear that he was planning something terrible gripped me, making it hard to focus on anything else. My daily routines became shadowed with dread, each moment outside my home a potential encounter with him. To cope with the growing paranoia, I began keeping detailed notes of each sighting. I jotted down the dates, times and locations where I saw him, trying to find a pattern in his appearances. My notebook became a chronicle of my fear, filled with hurried scribbles and frantic thoughts. I even started sketching his face from memory, capturing the sharp angles of his jaw and the piercing intensity of his eyes. One evening, after another unsettling encounter at the park, I decided it was time to take more concrete action. I called my colleagues, sharing my suspicions and the details of my encounters. They listened with concern, their voices a reassuring presence in the midst of my escalating fear. We agreed that I needed to be vigilant and that we would all keep an eye out for the man who had disrupted our lives. Armed with my notebook and the support of my colleagues, I felt a renewed sense of determination. I wasn't going to let this man control my life with his silent menace. I began altering my routines, changing my routes, and varying the times I visited my favorite places. Each step was a small act of defiance, a way to reclaim the city that had always been my refuge. Despite the fear that lingered in the back of my mind, I refused to let it consume me. I was prepared to take action to protect myself and those around me. The city, with all its beauty and chaos, was still my sanctuary, and I would fight to keep it that way. The gravity of the situation had finally reached a tipping point. It was clear that my safety and the safety of my colleagues was at risk. The decision was made to bring in the authorities and meet with the boutique's management to address the escalating threat. We convened in the back room of Aurora's Treasures, a place that had become a sanctuary amidst the turmoil. The room was filled with the scent of fresh coffee and the quiet hum of anticipation. 
My heart pounded as I prepared to recount the harrowing experiences of the past weeks. Seated around the table were my colleagues, our store manager, and two police officers, Detective Harris and Officer Ramirez. Their presence brought a semblance of reassurance, their professional demeanor a stark contrast to the chaotic fear that had enveloped my life. I took a deep breath and began detailing the man's behavior, starting with his initial visit and culminating in the disturbing incidents of stalking. I laid out my notebook, filled with dates, times and locations, along with the sketches I had made of his face. The officers listened intently, their expressions growing more serious with each passing moment. He started coming to the park where I usually walk, I explained, my voice steady despite the fear gnawing at my insides. I saw him at the ice cream kiosk, just standing there, watching me. Then again at the flower shop, and several other places I frequent. It's like he's always one step behind me, always watching. The store manager, Miss Green, leaned forward, her brow furrowed with concern. We've had issues with this man before, she admitted. He was always a difficult customer, aggressive and demanding, but we had no idea he was capable of this. Detective Harris nodded thoughtfully. This isn't just about being a troublesome customer. Stalking is a serious crime, and based on what you've described, he poses a significant threat to your safety. Officer Ramirez began outlining our options. We can pursue a restraining order, which would legally prohibit him from coming near you or the store. We can also increase patrols in the area and provide you with a direct line to our department for emergencies. The sense of relief that washed over me was overwhelming. For the first time in weeks, I felt a glimmer of hope. The police were taking this seriously, and I wasn't alone in dealing with the threat. Miss Green spoke up, her tone firm and supportive. We'll do everything we can to protect you and our staff. We'll install additional security cameras and make sure no one is left alone in the store. Your safety is our top priority. Together, we began developing a comprehensive safety plan. The police provided us with guidelines on how to handle future encounters, emphasizing the importance of staying vigilant and documenting any further incidents. They also recommended a few self-defense classes, which we all agreed to attend as a team. As the meeting drew to a close, I felt a renewed sense of determination. The fear that had clouded my days was still present, but it was tempered by the knowledge that I had a support system in place. The management, my colleagues, and the police were all committed to ensuring my safety. We walked out of the back room with a clear plan of action. Aurora's treasures, once a peaceful haven, had become a battleground for my sense of security. But now, with the collective effort of those around me, I was ready to reclaim my sanctuary and face the future with newfound courage. The day after our meeting with the police dawned with a sense of cautious optimism. Aurora's treasures felt like a fortified haven, its serenity bolstered by the security measures we'd put in place. My colleagues and I went about our duties with a shared sense of vigilance, knowing that we were not alone in facing the threat. The store was bustling with customers, the air filled with the soft murmur of conversations and the rustle of shopping bags. The addition of a discreet security guard, positioned near the entrance, provided an extra layer of reassurance. I was restocking a shelf when the door chime rang, signaling the arrival of a new customer. My heart sank as I saw him walk in. The man who had become the source of my nightmares stood just inside the door, scanning the store with his intense gaze. His eyes locked onto mine, and a chill ran down my spine. Despite the preparations and the presence of security, fear gripped me, rendering me momentarily paralyzed. My colleagues noticed him too. Sarah, who was closest to me, stepped forward, placing a reassuring hand on my arm. It's going to be okay, she whispered, her voice steady and calm. Mark, positioned near the counter, discreetly signaled the security guard, who began to move towards the man. The tension in the store was palpable as the guard approached him. Sir, I need you to leave the premises, the guard said firmly. You are not allowed to be here. The man's face twisted in confusion and then anger. What are you talking about? He demanded, his voice rising. I have every right to be here. The guard remained calm, repeating his request. Sir, you need to leave. The police have been notified, and they will be here shortly to discuss this with you. Panic threatened to overtake me as the confrontation escalated. The other customers began to sense the tension, 
their conversations hushed and their movements cautious. Some edged towards the exit, while others watched with a mix of curiosity and concern. Within minutes, the police arrived, their presence a welcome sight amidst the growing chaos. Detective Harris and Officer Ramirez entered the store, their expressions professional and composed. They approached the man, who was now fuming with anger, his fists clenched at his sides. Sir, we need to have a word with you outside, Detective Harris said, his tone authoritative yet calm. Let's step out and discuss this. The man glared at the officers, his eyes narrowing with suspicion. Why should I? He snapped. I haven't done anything wrong. Detective Harris maintained his composure, his voice steady. We have received multiple complaints about your behavior. You need to understand that there are legal boundaries you must respect. If you continue to harass or threaten anyone, there will be serious consequences. The man hesitated, his defiance wavering under the weight of the police presence. Finally, with a begrudging nod, he followed the officers outside. The tension in the store began to dissipate replaced by a cautious sense of relief. Through the storefront windows, I watched as the police spoke to him, their conversation serious but controlled. The man listened, his posture stiff and his expression dark. Despite the fear he had instilled in me, I couldn't help but feel a twinge of pity as he stood there, facing the reality of his actions. After a few minutes, the police handed him a document, likely a formal warning or restraining order. He took it, glancing back at the store with a heavy, resentful gaze before turning away and walking off down the street. As the police re-entered the store, they assured us that the situation was being handled and that they would continue to monitor the area. Their presence was a comforting reminder that we were not alone in this struggle. My colleagues gathered around, their support a soothing balm to my frayed nerves. We did it, Sarah said softly, her smile warm and encouraging. We're going to be okay. For the first time in weeks, I allowed myself to believe it. The shadows that had loomed over Aurora's treasures were beginning to lift, replaced by a sense of solidarity and resilience. Together, we had faced the threat head on, and together, we would continue to protect our sanctuary. Weeks had passed since the police intervention at Aurora's treasures, and the memory of the man's intimidating presence had begun to fade, replaced by a cautious optimism. The final step in ensuring our safety was the court hearing. The day of the hearing dawned, bringing with it a mixture of anxiety and hope. It was time to face him one last time and seek a resolution that would grant us peace. The courthouse was a grand, imposing building, its marble facade gleaming under the morning sun. Inside, the atmosphere was a blend of formality and tension. As I entered the courtroom, the weight of the moment settled heavily on my shoulders. My colleagues Sarah and Mark, along with Miss Green, were by my side, their presence a pillar of support. The room was arranged with the judge's bench at the front, flanked by rows of wooden pews. The man sat across the room, flanked by his lawyer. He avoided eye contact, his posture tense and defiant. I took a deep breath, steeling myself for what lay ahead. The judge, a stern-looking woman with sharp features and kind eyes, called the hearing to order. The proceedings began with the prosecution presenting the case against the man, detailing his history of aggressive behavior and the stalking incidents that had led us here. Your Honor, the prosecutor began, the defendant has repeatedly harassed and intimidated the staff at Aurora's treasures. His actions have caused significant distress and fear. We have documented evidence and witness testimonies to support our request for a restraining order. My heart pounded as I was called to the stand. I recounted the harrowing experiences, my voice steady but laced with emotion. He would appear wherever I went, always watching, always making me feel unsafe. It was more than just harassment, it was a violation of my peace and security. Sarah and Mark also testified, each providing their own accounts of the man's behavior and the impact it had on all of us. Their words mirrored my own experiences, painting a clear picture of the persistent threat he posed. The man's lawyer attempted to downplay his actions, arguing that there was no concrete evidence of intent to harm. But the judge listened intently, weighing the testimonies and the documented incidents with a measured gaze. Miss Green spoke next, her voice filled with conviction. As the manager of Aurora's treasures, it is my responsibility to ensure the safety of my staff. This man's behavior has been unacceptable and threatening. 
We need the court's protection to prevent further harassment. The judge turned her attention to the man, who now looked visibly uncomfortable. Do you have anything to say in your defense? She asked. He hesitated, then muttered something about misunderstanding and exaggerated claims, but his words rang hollow against the backdrop of our collective testimonies. After what felt like an eternity, the judge announced her decision. Based on the evidence presented and the testimonies of the witnesses, I find that the defendant's behavior constitutes harassment and a credible threat to the safety of the plaintiffs. Therefore, I am granting a restraining order against the defendant. He is prohibited from coming within 500 feet of Aurora's treasures and its staff. A wave of relief washed over me. The judge's words were a balm to the anxiety that had plagued me for so long. Justice had been served, and with it came a sense of closure and security. As we exited the courtroom, my colleagues and I shared a collective sigh of relief. We did it, Sarah said, her smile radiant. We can finally move on. Miss Green placed a comforting hand on my shoulder. You've been incredibly brave. This is a victory for all of us. With the restraining order in place, the dark cloud that had hung over Aurora's treasures began to dissipate. The legal protection granted us the peace of mind we had desperately needed. While the scars of the experience would take time to heal, the knowledge that we had stood up against the threat and prevailed was empowering. As we walked out into the sunlight, I felt a renewed sense of hope and determination. Aurora's treasures, our sanctuary, was safe once more. And so were we. Months had passed since the court hearing and the atmosphere at Aurora's treasures had transformed. The boutique was once again a place of warmth and joy, bustling with customers who seemed oblivious to the dark chapter we had recently closed. The colorful displays of merchandise, the gentle hum of conversations, and the soothing background music filled the store with a sense of normalcy and comfort. Our team had come through the ordeal stronger and more united. The bond we had forged through shared adversity was evident in the way we worked together supporting each other with a newfound sense of camaraderie. Sarah's infectious laughter, Mark's steady presence, and Miss Green's unwavering leadership had become the cornerstones of our little community. The incident had also spurred significant improvements in our security measures. Additional cameras now monitored every corner of the store, and we had installed a state-of-the-art alarm system. The presence of a security guard during peak hours provided an extra layer of reassurance, ensuring that we could go about our work without the constant fear of an unexpected threat. One of the most valuable changes was the emphasis on personal safety training. Miss Green had arranged for a series of workshops and training sessions focused on self-defense and emergency response. The training sessions were both empowering and practical, equipping us with the skills and confidence to handle any potential threats. Today, we'll go over some basic self-defense techniques, said our instructor, a tall athletic woman named Lisa. She demonstrated various moves, from blocking an attack to escaping a hold, making sure we understood each step. We practiced diligently, our initial awkwardness giving way to growing confidence. Sarah, always the optimist, turned the sessions into a source of fun. Come on, Mark, try to catch me, she teased practicing her evasive maneuvers with playful enthusiasm. Her light-hearted approach made the serious training feel less daunting, helping us bond even more. Beyond the physical training, we also learned about situational awareness and the importance of trusting our instincts. Your intuition is a powerful tool, Lisa reminded us. If something feels off, don't ignore it. Take action. The impact of these sessions was profound. Not only did we feel more secure at work, but we also carried these lessons into our personal lives. I found myself walking with a newfound sense of awareness, my confidence bolstered by the knowledge that I could protect myself if needed. As the days turned into weeks and the weeks into months, the boutique thrived. Customers continued to flock to Aurora's treasures, drawn by our unique offerings and the friendly, welcoming atmosphere we had cultivated. The dark memories of the past were slowly overshadowed by the vibrant everyday moments that defined our lives. One afternoon, as I was arranging a new display of handcrafted jewelry, I paused to take in the scene around me. Sarah was helping a customer choose a gift, her smile bright and genuine. Mark was at the register, efficiently handling a line of shoppers. Miss Green was in her office, reviewing inventory and planning future events. 
The boutique felt alive with the hum of daily business, a testament to our resilience and determination. The fear and uncertainty that had once overshadowed our days had been replaced by a renewed sense of purpose and community. I felt a deep sense of gratitude for the support we had received from each other, from the police, and from our loyal customers. The journey had been challenging, but it had also shown us the strength of our bonds and the importance of looking out for one another. As I continued with my work, I couldn't help but smile. Aurora's Treasures was more than just a store. It was a sanctuary, a place where we had faced our fears and emerged stronger. We had returned to normal life, but we were forever changed, more vigilant, more united, and more grateful for the simple everyday moments that made our lives rich and fulfilling.